Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 17 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to generate these central align menu and how to implement this menu section inside the header that we did a couple of lessons ago. So let's jump right into our administration panel and let's create a bunch of pages that we're gonna then use to populate our menu. I just created the page about and page content that are the two pages that I want. First of all, let's access our text editor and inside the ink folder, let's select the teamsupport.php file. Let's scroll back here and let's create a small comment just a line of comment to indicate that I'm gonna activate enough menu option. Let me create a little bit of space. So it's gonna be centered aligned to your screen. And here we can create the usual custom function that we're gonna write to activate whatever option we wanna activate. So let's call the function as usual with sunset underscore register underscore nav underscore menu open and close the brackets no parameters needs to pass inside the brackets let's open the curly brackets and inside let's write the really simple and straightforward function to register a new navigation menu and the function of wordpress is register underscore nav underscore menu let's open the brackets and inside as a first parameter we have to specify the location this location has to be a unique name then then we're gonna call back again in the front end to uh, print the actual menu so i'm gonna call this primary but you can call it however you want you can call it like main navigation or you can call it first menu or like header menu whatever you want the important thing it is all one single word if you have multiple words just use the underscore to connect different words don't use the dash and don't use special characters as simple as possible so this one is going to be my primary the second parameter is not uh, necessary it's optional but it's better to use it because we are releasing this theme so we want to give the ability to whatever user is going to use this theme to understand what kind of menu is this primary and the description is good for this purpose so let's put a bunch of single quotes to write a screen and let's write primary navigation menu we can call it or we could call it header navigation menu and it's pretty good here. Now we have to call the usual action to activate this function at a specific point of the generation of our WordPress installation. So let's call the add action function and inside here as an action I want to call this function during the after setup of the theme and then the function that I want to call is this function here that I just generated and of course as usual I pass the function has a string inside single quotes let's close with a semicolon let's save it let's go back in our administration panel let's refresh it and inside the appearance uh, menu we have a sub menu voice called menus if we click on it we're gonna see here uh, wordpress by default generated a pre-built menu called menu one but it actually doesn't exist because it's not saved you can have any option basically the first time you access this page wordpress is gonna pre-populate this first fake menu with a custom link to your home page out of the text your home page link because of course it knows it and then puts all the pages that you have we have only two pages so it automatically added these two pages inside the menu let's name the menu with like header menu and then create this menu after we create this menu of course now the menu is saved we have the manage location option and we have here all the locations that we generated we generated just one as you can see here we have the same description that we put inside our primary registration of menu so if we click that 
and we click save now this menu is connected to our primary menu. If we go here and manage location, we're gonna have the full list of all the menus that we're gonna generate during this tutorial and we can swap whatever custom menu option we create. So this is pretty straightforward. This is not something uh, crazy or something too complicated. Just as a side note, when you create a a taxonomy or when we when you create a custom post type you can all of course you can add these newly generated options at the menu but sometimes the information that you just created they don't appear here in this accordion sidebar to um, select a custom taxonomy or a custom post type to make it appear you just uh, be sure to check screen options here and see if your options are deactivated in the checkbox as usual, if I'm going too fast, be sure to check the previous series of tutorial that I did, the WordPress 101 for beginner developers, where I explain in details all the options and all the meaning of these options in the menus administration panel. But let's keep going. So now we have our menu generated in the back end. In the back end we have to just print our menu in the front end here in the bottom part of our header. So let's access again our text editor and this time let's access the header.php file. Let's scroll down here and now finally we can start editing this HTML script. Let's edit a, a little bit the HTML markup to convert it into an HTML5 markup. So this is a little bit of a personal opinion, this is a little bit of a personal preference. I don't like to write HTML5 markup right away while I'm coding because most of the time I change stuff around. So this one I know, now I know because I coded and I know that I'm gonna have here the nav container, I coded the header so I can change the markup to header and then close the header here. But I didn't know that while I was coding this. I mean, I had a generic idea of this HTML markup, but I wasn't sure that I was going to I was going to stick with this logic and with this structure. So, I don't really like to start right on with the HTML5 markup if I'm not sure if I want to move stuff around. So, putting everything as a div it's uh, more manageable for me. Then you can always, as I usually do, go back at the end of your project and do a generic cleanup and convert whatever you want in HTML5 or remove stuff around. So uh, you're free to do whatever it makes you comfortable. So now inside here, the nav container, we can write our code to call the nav menu and because we are calling bootstrap i'm gonna use the logic and the html structure of bootstrap so inside the nav container let's create a little bit of space let's create also here a little bit of space so also this code is going to be at the center of your screen Let's open the nav HTML5 container with the usual class of bootstrap for the navbar. Then navbar default to have a default style applied. And now I want to use navbar dash sunset because I'm going to use this class to generate my own custom uh, tile for this navbar. Let's close this tile. Now here we can open the PHP tags. And inside here we can write the uh, WordPress function to call our menu. To call the menu we have to use the function wp underscore nav underscore menu and inside here inside the brackets we have to write an array of arguments. So you can write and generate a variable called arguments and create the array here and then put the variable inside the brackets or you can write the array straight on inside the brackets. That's how I like to do it. Let's remember to close the WP nav menu function with a semicolon. Inside the array, let's go into another line and let's start putting our attributes, our attribute inside the array. So the first attribute is between single quotes, the theme underscore location that the parameter is identical of the parameter that we specify when we register the nav menu. So in my case is primary, comma to separate the different attributes. 
I want to remove the container because I don't want the uh, WordPress generates a container around uh, my menu. So I want to put container false and false without any single quote because it's a boolean so just through a false i want to apply a specific menu class to the menu ul element that is going to be generated inside here so i want to apply the class of bootstrap also in this case so menu underscore class it's equal to a bunch of classes nav navbar dash nav and that's it. Let's save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh it and let's see what's going on. So now we have our menu with a little bit of style. If we inspect the element, of course, we're going to see that we are inside a nav container that is the same width of our container. Our nav bar has the proportion and the padding of a simple standard nav bar of Bootstrap and it works the uh, rollover and if we click it navigates directly to the actual page, it goes to the content, it goes back to the home page, so it works. So technically this menu should be already inside our header container and right uh, at the bottom of the header container, but because we converted this section into a table and we forced the table cell to be height 100%, we are going to have a little bit of issues in this case. What we could do here, we could uh, solve this issue in a lot of different ways. It depends on what really what you really like. We could like force the uh, table to not be a hundred percent, but be a I don't know eighty percent, and then the menu would be here. Or we could put two table rows, one containing this uh, top part and one containing the menu, and then assign a specific height percentage of pixel to fill this space. The easiest solution that I found and I really like is the following one. Let's set a position relative to the header container class that it's our container where our menu is. So here we already have a, posi a position relative. The second thing we have to do is use the class nav container and put a position absolute. Let's create a little bit of space and let's write the class dot nav container and here we can specify the position absolute. So what it does the position absolute is basically removing the menu here to be uh, an element that occupies space. So now we have the ability to move it around however we want and we are not forced to stay inside the containment of this height because this element doesn't occupy space anymore it's floating around it's not really floating but it's like kind of detached it's on another layer of our environment here of our markup so what we can do now we can uh, force the bottom to be zero we can put the left to be zero and the right to be zero and we don't specify the top because the top is fine as to be as the same height of the content so let's save it let's go back in our front end refresh it and check and now as you can see our header here our nav container it's inside we specified bottom zero so the div is forcing the position of this element at the bottom of the first container that it finds with a position relative. So a position absolute stops whenever uh, it the container or the div or the object or wherever the attribute finds a position relative wrapper around it. So now we have the menu inside here and we can style it as we want. Of course, if you don't see any edits, if you don't see anything updating in your file, always remember to activate the SAS compiling of your SAS file because we are using SAS, so you need SAS to watch for whatever editing you're doing and to generate a CSS file in order to be readable. So it's pretty much it for this super quick lesson. We just created a new menu, uh, our primary menu, and we printed our menu inside our front end. In the next lesson, we are gonna properly style the menu to reflect 
the style that we created inside our uh, design file and we're gonna apply also the bootstrap nav class container to prevent whatever issue we could have it uh, if a user decides to use a drop down menu with multiple classes or multiple menus links and we will check and we will see how to handle all these situation in a responsive environment so it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, as usual, give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. Or if you don't give a shit, it's fine. It's totally fine. I really appreciate your support. So thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.